we going to see the animation for the brachial plexus now see here now we going to zoom this area so that you can see the roots clearly see there yes that is the c5 root c6 root c7 c8 and t1 so c5 c6 they join together to form upper trunk c7 middle trunk c8 and t1 they form the lower trunk so we have three trunks now these trunks yes going to divide into divisions anterior division posterior division we going to remove the clavicle so that you are seeing the divisions right so now the lateral cord is formed by the anterior division of upper trunk and middle trunk this is the medial cord formed by the anterior division of the lower trunk and we also seeing the yes posterior division clearly there yes see there that is a posterior cord okay right so three cords of the brachial plexus now we going to see some branches from the brachial plexus some main branches we will see there is a branch from the trunk of the brachial plexus now first branch yes you are seeing the serratus anterior muscle now over the serratus anterior muscle you are seeing the nerve there yes that nerve is our long thoracic nerve long thoracic nerve root value c5 c6 c7 so long thoracic nerve it is a branch from the root of the brachial plexus c5 root yes c6 and c7 root right so now we completed the serratus anterior muscle now we going to see the subscapularis muscle see here this is our subscapularis muscle now subscapularis muscle hybrid muscle i hope you know that now subscapularis muscle supplied by two nerves now this is our upper subscapular nerve supplying the upper part of subscapularis and this is our lower subscapular nerve lower subscapular nerve supplies our subscapularis muscle and also the yes is our teres major muscle okay so teres major muscle and the subscapularis these two muscles supplied by our lower subscapular nerve so these are the branches some important branches you have to see in the animation now next we going to discuss the applied now applied we have the herb's palsy and the klumke's palsy now herb's palsy it is the upper trunk injury please write herb's palsy is upper trunk injury what is the roots involved c5 c6 now what is klumke's palsy klumke's palsy is a lower trunk injury c8 and t1 first point herb's palsy involvement of c5 c6 klumke's palsy c8 and t1 now herb's palsy is due to falling on their shoulder it is due to falling on their shoulder now another reason is aggressive pulling of the baby during the labor which in turn damage the upper trunk so the point is whenever there is the increase of angle between the neck and the shoulder then the patient will have the herb's palsy now the klumke's palsy is due to hyper abduction injury which is due to hyper abduction injury hyper abduction injury excessive upward pull of the limb hyper abduction injury now in herb's palsy yes injury at the herb's point now what is the herb's point sir herb's point it is the meeting point of six nerves here what are the nerves meeting at the herb's point now this is c5 root this is c6 root c5 and c6 join together to form the upper trunk now from the c5 root yes anterior division and the posterior division this is upper trunk this is anterior division and this is posterior division and from this we have a branch okay this is nerve to subclavius this is supra scapular nerve now these six nerves meeting at this point this meeting point is called herb's point c5 root c6 then anterior division posterior division nerve to subclavius supra scapular nerve so these six nerves meet at this point and that is called herb's point so injury of the herb's point yes which in turn leads to herb's palsy shall we proceed right now what are the nerves affected in the herb's palsy so the nerves affected in the herb's palsy the main nerves 
affected in the herbs palsy herbs palsy and clumkey's palsy okay yes the main nerve affected in the herbs palsy what are those our supra scapular nerve supra scapular nerve and then musculocutaneous nerve and then axillary nerve these are the main nerves affected here now in clumkey's palsy median nerve and ulnar nerve will be affected c8 and t1 fibers of median nerve and ulnar nerve will be affected okay sir the supra scapular nerve supplies supra spinatus muscle and infra spinatus muscle yes now axillary nerve supplies teres minor and deltoid muscle musculocutaneous nerve supplies our biceps muscle okay our brachialis muscle okay and coracobrachialis muscle now please underline the coracobrachialis muscle coracobrachialis muscle please write note now the coracobrachialis muscle which is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve with root value c5 c6 c7 fiber so coracobrachial is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve only but but the root fibers are c5 c6 c7 that is why coracobrachial is which is not affected in the herbs palsy not affected in the herbs palsy okay right now what are the muscles affected in the clumkey's palsy muscles affected are small muscles of the hand small muscles of the hand will be affected okay small muscles of the hand affected in the yes our clumkey's palsy now what is the deformity yes we are getting for the herbs palsy now see here we're going to list out the muscles now supraspinatus muscle infraspinatus muscle teres minor muscle deltoid muscle biceps muscle and then brachialis muscle okay right now supraspinatus muscle and deltoid muscle what they will do abduction of the shoulder joint supraspinatus muscle abduction of 0 to 15 degree of shoulder joint deltoid muscle 15 to 90 degree abduction of the shoulder joint now this infraspinatus and teres minor these two muscles they help for lateral rotation of the shoulder joint now biceps muscle and brachialis muscle they flex the elbow so biceps muscle it is also doing supination now if you say the actions in the opposite then you will get the features of herbs palsy now shoulder joint will be number 1 adducted very good now these muscles will not work so these muscles they will abduct the shoulder joint so the patient will be having opposite adduction of the shoulder joint lateral rotation not possible adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder joint see the elbow joint elbow joint flexion by biceps and brachialis muscle so the opposite deformity extension of elbow and biceps muscle supination that will be gone so the baby will be having pronated forearm now this is the feature of herbs palsy so what is the feature of herbs palsy number 1 adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder joint extension of a elbow joint and pronation of the forearm is that clear now this deformity is called as policeman's tip deformity this deformity is called policeman's tip deformity okay now what will be the feature of the clumkey's palsy so 
the median nerve and ulnar nerve will be gone so small muscles of the palm will be paralyzed so the patient will have complete claw hand patient will have complete claw hand plus t1 sympathetic fiber will be involved the involvement of t1 sympathetic fiber t1 c8 and t1 lower trunk the involvement of t1 sympathetic fiber which in turn result in one syndrome what syndrome horner syndrome which in turn result in horner syndrome okay now in this diagram yes we are seeing the complete claw hand so complete claw hand yes this is what we get in the clumkey's palsy in the clumkey's palsy so in clumkey's palsy i told you c8 and t1 fibers will be affected median nerve and ulnar nerve will be affected so patient will have the complete paralysis of the lumbricals lumbricals interosseous will be gone so all the small muscles of the hand will be gone so lumbricals interosseous they will do this movement what is that flexion of metacarpophalangeal joint plus extension of interphalangeal joint this is the action of lumbricals interosseous now in clumkey's palsy all the lumbricals all the interosseous will be gone lumbricals 1 and 2 supplied by median nerve lumbricals 3 and 4 supplied by our ulnar nerve now in clumkey's palsy median nerve ulnar nerve will be paralyzed yes now because of that the patient will have exact opposite what is it extension of metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion of interphalangeal joint extension of metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion of interphalangeal joint now this is what you see in the complete claw hand okay so in the clumkey's palsy yes you see the full claw hand plus horner syndrome the involvement of the sympathetic fibers over t1 which in turn result in horner syndrome now next one last topic in the brachial plexus and its injuries we're going to discuss about horner syndrome now what is horner syndrome horner syndrome that is due to the problem with the sympathetic supply problem with the sympathetic supply to the one side of the face now what are the features the patient will have ptosis meiosis anhydrosis and enophthalmos now the ptosis will be partial ptosis only why sir partial ptosis because ptosis is mainly due to the our lps muscle involvement lps muscle that is the main muscle elevate the the upper eyelid so the palsy of lps muscle only which, which result in the complete ptosis okay so now here which muscle is involved the muller's muscle is involved so muller's muscle is a smooth muscle so the patient will have only the partial ptosis involvement of lps muscle yes which in turn result in complete ptosis meiosis yes which is in turn due to the involvement of dilator pupillae muscle dilator pupillae muscle will be gone so the baby will be having constricted pupil now we're going to discuss the oculosympathetic pathway we're going to discuss yes the oculosympathetic pathway which involves the three group of neurons now the first order neuron which is located in the hypothalamus okay now from the hypothalamus the fibers will come up to the t1 t2 segment of the spinal cord now fibers from t1 t2 yes the second order neuron will start so first order neuron will end in the t1 t2 segment of the spinal cord now fibers from t1 t2 that is second order neuron that will be passing above the apex of the lung above the apex of the lung and in turn reaches the superior cervical ganglion 
Now fibers from superior cervical ganglion will act as the third order neuron. Now the fibers from superior cervical ganglion which is carried by the plexus over external carotid artery and the plexus over internal carotid artery which in turn reaches the pupil. So first order neuron from the hypothalamus to the spinal cord T1 T2 segment. Second order neuron from T1 T2 segment of spinal cord which is arching above the apex of lung and reaches the superior cervical ganglion. Now the fibers from superior cervical ganglion is the third order neuron. Now the, these fibers are carried by the plexus over external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery which in turn give the fibers to pupil. Okay. Now the first order pathway lesions the first order pathway lesions that is due to brainstem lesions. Now second order neuron I told you which is passing above the apex of the lung. So second order pathway lesion second order pathway lesion is due to pancoast tumor. And the third order pathway lesions third order pathway lesion is due to internal carotid artery aneurysms internal carotid artery aneurysms yes this is the oculosympathetic pathway you have to know for the horner syndrome okay just know the first order neuron second order neuron and third order neuron if you remember that that is more than sufficient so that's all about the yes this horner syndrome it is seen in our clumkey's palsy so Clumkey's palsy, you will see the complete claw hand and the Horner syndrome. So that's all about the brachial plexus. So in this module, we discuss about the formation of brachial plexus, branches of brachial plexus, and we also discuss some applied, the injuries of brachial plexus, no? Upper trunk injury and the lower trunk injury. That is Earl's palsy and the Clumkey's palsy. And finally, we discussed in detail about the Horner syndrome too. Okay, right. So that's all about the brachial plexus topic.